This past Thursday, I celebrated my 10-year anniversary as being ordained as a transitional deacon in the Episcopal Church. I was ordained with four other people, two middle-aged divorced women, an African-American retired Marine gentleman, and another recently married young man, hasty like me. I was 30 years old, the same age that Jesus was when he began his ordained ministry. And I remember that morning we all gathered together in the vesting room where we were all clueless as to how to put on those clergy collars. We'd all grown to love each other deeply after journeying through the ordination process together those four years. What was different was between the men and the women in the group. For the women had struggled just to get to the starting point of the ordination process. The men had it easier. However, that day we were all equally filled with God's grace as we were ordained in the sacrament of ordination. I had no idea what we would experience together over these last ten years. We were entering into a church who had begun a journey towards equality, a movement that had started while we were in seminary. The two women who had felt a calling throughout their entire lives to be ordained initially heard no from men who were making those decisions. It was not that women weren't being ordained in the church. They actually had been for quite some time. But you still have to be sponsored by a priest, a parish, and a diocese to go to seminary. And they had been told no at one stage or another for many years. So this last week, when I saw the joy on their Facebook post the day after our ordination anniversary, that marriage had become open to everyone, I understood a little bit more why they felt that way. Another sacrament became available to everyone, and they rejoiced with those who had been told no. A father had two daughters, one at the age to get married, which is 12 in biblical times, and one at the age to have children. A father had dreams for his daughters, for a future marriage, for a future baptism. The father was able to bring both of these young ladies to Jesus to experience the grace of those possibilities. As our gospel ends today, we cannot be mistaken of the invitation of God's church. And Jesus said, Give her something to eat. Now Jesus does not ask, but Jesus told them to feed her. And we look throughout much of Jesus' ministry is for creating space for those who are marginalized, those who are dead to the larger world, and to show them grace instead. The space created in order for all of God's children to move together towards breaking bread. For it is in breaking bread that God's grace can begin to bridge the gaps of our differences and allow us to experience the richness of living in God. A 
I was blessed with the diversity of my ordination group. For in breaking bread together over those years, we began to see God in each other and recognize the gifts that we each could bring to the church we were going to serve. Paul tells the people today in Corinth, For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Poor, in the most basic of definitions, means without. Jesus brought a new hope to those daughters today because the ultimate father and mother in our lives is always God. Yet people would hear this story of amazing grace for surely a long time that would follow and still say shame. Shame on Jesus for letting someone to be healed without his permission. Shame on Jesus for healing someone who was sick, sick as defined in society's terms as surely they had sinned. Shame on Jesus for giving grace when he should have pressed on with the supposedly more important daughter of Jairus. We all know how long it takes for our hearts in this secular world to find that change. We look at the civil rights movement and women's equality including ordination. Knowing that even when the rights have been granted by law, it still takes a lot of hearts to open to begin to see the change. Yet back then, Jesus offered equal healing to both of God's daughters. God's grace often goes against the initial views of our world. Grace is a movement of bringing God's definition of fairness to life. Yet God is very patient with all of us, knowing each of us follows a different course to get to a shared place of understanding. And there is grace also that we can show each other as we continue to watch for Jesus' healing actions take root around us in this day and time. Two young women were seeking life. Since I have been ordained, I have watched some people leave. Some churches enter legal battles over property due to gay men and women's ordination, and now more recently, marriage equality. I have also experienced hearing the words, thank you. Thank you for men and women who have experienced any discrimination in their own lives. They say thank you to a church who is willing to enter into a conversation and into waters first that all churches knew they were going towards. Thank you for being a sign of graceful hospitality. And these comments come from people of other denominations, both clergy and parishioners. Today, if a father has two daughters, they can serve and vote in our country that recognizes their value as much as a man. And 
now they may marry who they love. The freedom and acceptance brings the joy into so many lives that can only be described as grace. The Episcopal Church right now is at our national gathering called General Convention that's held every three years. Yesterday, we elected our first African-American presiding bishop who will follow our first woman presiding bishop, Catherine. I leave us with a taste of what presiding bishop-elect Michael Curry said in his brief acceptance speech. We've got a society where there are challenges before us and there are crises all around us. And the church has challenges before it. We got a God and there really is a Jesus and we are part of the Jesus movement. And nothing can stop the movement of God's love in this world. Amen.